Hi, I'm Pastor Bob Stett. I'm the pastor of Abundant Life Ministries of the Valley in San Jacinto. I want to thank you for inviting us into your home for today's message. I do ask you, though, to just quieten your spirit and just open up your heart and listen to the Word of God. I know He's got a word for you. But one thing for sure, he's got this word for every one of us. Jesus is saying in John 10:10, 10, 10, he's speaking of the devil. He says, he comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I, Jesus says, but I come that they may have life and that they may have life more abundantly. So Satan is there to rob you and to steal from you and to destroy things in your life. But Jesus, he wants to give it all to you abundantly, more abundantly, he says. And so, why don't you come on in and let's get into the Word of God and see what the answer is that's just for you. Here we go. We're so glad to have you with us today and, and uh, for you to hear God's Word and for it to change your life. That's what we are doing this program for, is for God's Word to change your life. We just want to ask you again that if you do not have a home church, you are welcome to come and try out Abundant Life Ministries. Uh, you are welcome to come and see if that could be the home church for you. But today we're going to hear God's Word and hopefully it will lift your spirits and cause you to think more about God today than you did yesterday. The title of my sermon is, Who Have You Chosen? And the scripture verse for it is 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter, and the 20th to the 23rd verse is my first scripture reference. As we hear God's word, we need to realize that God will always challenge us. He will always take us a step further than what we were yesterday. And so as we hear this come forward, I pray that you will be challenged to be more in God today than you were yesterday. In 2 Samuel, the scripture says, And there was also Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two, Moab, two of Moab's mightiest warriors. Another time he chased a lion down into a pit. And then despite the snow and the slippery ground, he caught the lion and killed it. Another time, armed only with a club, he killed a great Egyptian warrior who was armed with a spear. Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. There are, these are some of the deeds that made Benaiah almost as famous as the three. And we're going to let you know what this means. He was more honored than the other members of the 30. And we're going to discuss that. Though he was not one of the three, and David made him commander of his bodyguard. Names today, when we think about names today, we don't really give it too much thought about what they mean. But I want you to know that in biblical times, the names that were given meant something to God. Your name today means something to God. And so as we discuss and hear what the word is saying, I pray that it will challenge you for you to be something that God has created in you. And your name will be able to show you some of the characteristics that you should be showing forth for your God. Who are we? And what are we created to be stands many times in the name that we are given. This was always true in biblical times, always true. And so a name was carefully chosen and many times because of the conditions of a child's birth, um, it set forth in motion the meaning of a child's name. Many times we see in the word that a child's name because of the condition they were born could mean sorrow could be trouble, could be many avenues, or it could be joy, peace, many avenues that we could go and we, when we take the name and uh, siphon it down to its meaning. The word says that this is what we see in the names in chapter 23 that we just read uh, in verse 20. 
Um, the word tells us in the name of Benaiah. Uh, it means that God has built. The name of Benaiah means God has built. As a child growing up, uh, as a young boy and as a child, Benaiah, every time he heard his name, his name he heard was saying, God is built. God has built. When his mother called his name and said, Benaiah, come here, he heard God has built. Whenever he was going somewhere, doing something, and he would be called back, the word says that he could hear that God has built, made a statement in his life. Every time he accomplished anything, he heard his name, Benaiah, come, receive this gratitude. Benaiah, come, receive this honor. Benaiah, come, receive this accomplishment. All he heard was that God had built. He could never take credit for anything. Everything he heard because it always went back to God. Every time he achieved some great feat, every time he achieved some honor and his name was put forth, he had to turn and say to God, God, it's because you have built. It's because you have done this in my life is the reason why my name is Benaiah. God has built constantly rang in his ears. Now, Benaiah lived in a home where his father's name and his name was Jehoiada meant God knows. God knows. So every time his father's name was called by his brothers, by his sisters, by his, his uh, aunts and uncles, by his wife, every time his name was put forth, Benaiah heard, God knows. So he lived in the surrounding that God had built everything around him, and he lived in the atmosphere that God knows everything. Every time he heard his father's name, he knew that God was in the midst of their lives. Uh, God has built and God knows was embedded in Benaiah's very existence. Who he was, who he planned to be, every step that he took, he knew that God was the one had made the way. Every decision that he made, God was the one that was building character in his life. We need to stop and ask in our life, when we look to see, my name means praised. And you know, there isn't anything that I love doing more than anything is I love to praise God. Take the characteristic that your name means and see what God has planned for you. It will cause you to think more about how God sees you than how you see yourself. Now, as a grown man, Benaiah, um, uh, has proven he is God's man by him believing that God is building him what he needs to have to serve God with his whole heart. In verse 20, we see Benaiah doing many heroic deeds. The first thing we see in verse 20, the word tells us that he killed two Moab's, two of Moab's mightiest warriors. Now, when we're talking about a mighty warrior, we're not just talking about a warrior. We are talking about a mighty warrior. Now the warriors in that time were at least nine feet tall. So we are saying when we hear what God's word is telling us is that God had made a way for Benaiah to have the strength to be able to do what God wanted him to do. And so he went out and because it was necessary, he had to kill two of the Moab's mightiest warriors. He chased down a lion, the word says in verse 20. And it says that he chased down this lion into a pit in the snow and slippery ground and he killed it. Now you have to remember something. If there was a lion around, I'm not going to go chase it down. I'm going to find the fastest way I can go the other direction. But Benaiah, because God was building in him what he needed him to have in order to be chosen for the job that he was chosen for. Benaiah had the courage and he ran down, hunted down this lion. And the word says that the lion went down into a pit. Now you have now got a lion, not only that is mad, but he is cornered and he is down in this pit and Benaiah has chased him and he is in the pit with him. Now the greater part of the story 
is the fact that it was snowing. It says there was snow and it was slippery. Now, you know in your life, anything that gets a little bit harder to do, most of us turn back. It gets a little tough, a little difficult, a little out of the ordinary. Most of us turn around and we go another direction. But Benaiah knew in his character that God had built, that he had built the strength in him to do what he needed to do. Now, the second thing is, is that when it is snowing, most of the time, hunting is not done in the winter. It, at that time, it was done in the springtime. But Benaiah knew that he had to hunt down this lion and to deal with it. And so he hunted him and tracked him and went down into a pit. Now that angry lion was something else to contend with. I want to ask you something today. What lion in your life have you turned away from and you are going the other direction? What situation in your life, what hardship, what anger, what bitterness, whatever there is in your life that is controlling you in a pattern that you have set in your life, how many times have you run away from that lion? Well, I'm telling you today, God has built character in you for you to do what is necessary to allow him to bring down that lion in your life. But do you know what? You have to deal with it as well. God is going to take you on that journey, take you into that place where you're afraid to go, where you are afraid to, to do the attacking and to take care of what needs to be done. God says, if you will go under extraordinary circumstances, I will take you and go with you. Because just like he did Benaiah, Benaiah knew God has built that there was no other way he could go except God go with him. Now the word says here in those heroic deeds that he killed that lion. Do you know what happens in our lives, what we normally do? We may maim the lion. We may knock it unconscious. We may disable it. But God didn't say to do any of those. Situations in your life that has control of you that is not godly, God says you kill it. You take it down and you cause it to where it can no longer raise its ugly head and come up in your face. Don't give it just a, a smack. Don't give it just a push away. Don't try to act as though it doesn't exist. You need to march right into that circumstance, right into that situation, and you need to kill whatever it is that is causing you not to be all you can be in God. The word says here that in verse 21 that he killed a great Egyptian warrior who was armed with a 10-foot spear. Now, an Egyptian warrior, the same thing. We are not talking about small people. We are talking about giant-sized people. Amen? And we're talking about now this giant-sized uh, Egyptian. Now, it says that he was a mighty warrior, the same situation, and that he had a 10-foot spear. Now, I want to tell you something. If I was approaching someone, just the size of them would probably detour me. But now to go up to someone with a 10-foot spear is a little different situation. But Benaiah knew that he had to do what God told him to do. And it says, and Benaiah only had a club. Now, think about it. We're probably talking the size of a, probably a baseball bat. Uh, could be a little fatter, could be a little longer, but it said it was a club. And so now we see Benaiah, now God has built, we see Benaiah going into this situation and the word says that this is what he does. He took the spear away from the warrior. Now look, I may stand back and make a lot of noise. I may do a lot of jumping up and down. I may do a lot of screaming and yelling, but the word says that he took the spear away from that Egyptian warrior. You got to get mighty close to that Egyptian warrior in order to take that spear away from him. But it says that's what he did because see in his heart, in his mind, in his every being that he was, he had heard from the time he was an infant, God has built. And he said, God, you and me are going to go the whole battle. We're going to do the whole thing. And the word says that he took that spear away, that 10 foot spear away from that, that mighty warrior. And he says he killed him with his own spear. 
Now, you know, he could have sidestepped him and, and done a fast move and got up there and, you know, hit the uh, Egyptian in the head uh, and killed him with his club. But how many of you know the worst thing that could happen? It would be like a police officer, someone to take away his weapon and then kill him with his very own weapon. There was nothing more humiliating. I mean, his legend behind him, he was dead. But the legend behind him, I can tell you, went on and on and on. Do you know that that mighty Egyptian was killed by his very own spear? And so as we see this, that he was uh, an honored, more honored than the elite of David's personal guard. Now, we need to take a step and pay attention to how this is set up because the word tells us that there was a legion or a group or a platoon uh, type of setting. And in David's private bodyguard in his uh, elite amount, he had 30 men that personally guarded his family, guarded him. And out of that 30, there was also a famous three so out of the 30, now there is three that were more famous than the 30. And so as we see this, I want you to go with me to verse 8 of the same chapter, the 23rd chapter. And the word says that these are the names of David's mightiest men. The first man, his name was Joshabim who was commander of the three. So Joshabim was of those three that was out of the 30, he was the commander of the elite three that was set aside. The word says that the three greatest warriors among David's men, Joshobim was their leader. It says he once used his spear to kill 800 enemy warriors in a single battle. Now I want you to hear very closely what it is that was the attributes of these men that David set aside for his protection. Now the second one, next in rank, verse nine says, among the three was Eleazar. Uh, once Eleazar and David stood together ag against the Philistines when the entire, listen, the entire Israelite army had fled. The whole army took off and ran away and the only two left was Eleazar and David. It says he killed Philistines until his hand was too tired to even lift his sword. And the Lord gave him a great victory that day. And the rest of the army did not return until it was time to collect the plunder. So here all of these warriors, all of these mighty army run and hide. And David and Eleazar killed all of these uh, uh, Philistines. And then the army came back. I'd have been afraid to show my face. I'd have been ashamed to show my face, amen? But the word says that next in rank, remember there's three of them, was Shammah. The word says that one time the Philistines gathered at the Levi and attacked the Israelites in a field full of lentils. The Israelite army fled again. I'll tell you, we got an army here isn't doing very good. I mean, they're running away uh, right hand and left hand. But it says, but Shammah held his ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines. So the Lord brought him a great victory. Now, these are the three men that are the main three out of the 30 that protect David and his family. Now, we need to take a look at who these three men are. The word says that the commander of the mightiest three, Joshua Beam, his name meant will return with shame, will return with shame. Eleazar means God helps and Shema means frightful. Now we're going to take those and we're going to decide where we are coming from if your family was to be protected. If you were to place your protection in someone's hand, let's find out who you would choose in order for God to have the victory. Out of all of the 30 mighty warriors, the word says that he chose Benaiah. Now remember, he was not one of the three. He was not one of the 30. God chose him because his name meant God has built. He wanted 
God wanted the one to take care of his family. He wanted it to be known that God was the one that was building the wall around his family. The word says that David looked over his men and he saw that Joshua Beam's name meant will return to shame. And David said, I don't think so. I don't want somebody guarding my family, guarding my life, guarding the, the, the walk that I need to do to serve God. I don't want somebody's name that means to return to shame. And then he says, and Eleazar, God helps. Now, maybe that would be somebody would be in the running. God helps. I wouldn't mind having somebody guard me that his name meant God helps because I would think, well, you know what, God, if you're helping him, I'm in his front yard. I am going to have your help too. And then Shama, frightful. I don't think so. I don't want somebody, David said, guarding my family that's name means frightful. He says, I want somebody by the name of Benaiah. I want him to know that I trust in the same God that he serves. The word says then he saw that Benaiah was the one that had the characteristics that was, was born in him, that he was given the stature. He had proven himself of all the things that he had done. David knew that he could count on him. The one who will guard all that David holds dear. That is who Benaiah was. Who or what have you chosen today to guard what you hold dear? You need to take some time and step back. Go in a quiet place between you and God. Because you know what? There is something that you are depending upon to guard who you love. To guard your life. To guard your dreams to guard the things in your life that you hold dear. Have you thought today about who that is or what that is? Because God is putting this word forward today for you to take a second look at what you have put your trust in. Today, make it worth your while to find out who God is in your life. Who or what have you chosen to guard what you hold dear? Who are you giving charge to, to guard your husband, your wife, your children, your thoughts, your dreams, your desires? You know, God is very concerned about your desires. He's very concerned about the dreams that you have. He wants you to follow through and do exactly what he has called you to do. Take a look, a long look, whether your name is Mary, John, whatever it is, I challenge you today, we're not doing no weird thing about numerology or name, no, this is biblical because you don't know why you were named what you were named. You were named because God is the one that named you. God is the one. And if your name means peace or, or maybe it means uh, uh, walking a great distance, maybe whatever it, you find out, that what that is, it will be a characteristic in you that God will use to do the work he has called you to do. Have you chosen your intellect? You know, there's a lot of people out there in the world that they think they're so smart. Oh, they think nobody can do anything. They're as smart as the day is long. Nobody can come up on their blind side. Nobody can do anything because they're so smart. They found a way because of how smart they are. Maybe you've decided that your genealogy is what's going to be the one to guard what you hold dear. I got news for you people. We came from Adam and Eve. You don't have to go back in your life and think, well, I've got ancestors, you know, in Europe. I'm the descendant of a great king, a great queen. There's nothing wrong with that in regards to you not planning your life by it because Genealogy is true, but the word says don't, don't base your life on vain genealogies. It's not going to get you anywhere. But is that what you have put, that you are counting on you being something from, from your family tree, that that's what's going to get you somewhere? No, that's not going to work either. The word says, okay, then how about your philosophy? Oh, there are people out there with philosophy. I'll tell you, it's not God's word. It's just their philosophy. Your philosophy will pound you in the ground quicker than anything. And what about your horoscope? There's people out there that they wouldn't get out of bed unless their horoscope told them to do it. They live their life by what their horoscope says. Is that what you're going to put your trust in? 
Is that what you're going to have your family guarded by? Is that your horoscope? You depend upon that? Or how about your new age concept? See, new age isn't going to get you anywhere except to a place you don't want to go. New age is not loving God with your whole heart. New age is not even living a life for the God of this universe. New age is nothing but your own mind, your own thoughts, your own desires. And they put God's name in it every once in a while. No, new age isn't going to get you anywhere. It's going to, it will get you somewhere, but it's not going to be where you want to go. Or have you chosen the true living God that knows all? Benaiah's name was God has built. Are you choosing for your loved ones, for your family, for your dreams, your life, everything that you hold dear, do you have the right thing guarding them? Benaiah knew who his guard was, God has built. And as he walked his life and he did what God had called him to do, he, he received the highest in being the guard, the personal guard for King David. I challenge you today to get off into a quiet place, set down before the Lord, get your word out, let God minister to your heart and let him show you who is your true guard. Thank you today. I hope this word encourages you. Thank you for joining us once again. I do hope that today's message has been a blessing to you. Remember one thing though, just because you have failed in an area or two of your life doesn't make you a complete failure. And just because you may feel weak in an area or two of your life, it doesn't make you a weakling. You see, God, he says in his word, he has started a good work in you and it is going to be him that's going to finish that work in you. And so just do this. Stay in the word of God. Read the word of God. Abide in the Word of God and walk in the Word of God. Because as you do, your thoughts are going to be transformed. Your thoughts are going to be transformed. I need to say that again. And your speech is going to be different. Your conduct's going to be different. And so just be conscious every day of what's going on in your life. I'd like to add also that today can be the very first day of you making Jesus personal in your life. Not just a religious experience, but a relationship. He should be everything to you. When you rise in the morning, when you lay your head down at night, he should be on your mind. He, you should be living according to the way he would want you to live. So I'm challenging you right now. Take a look at what's going on in your life today. Is he the center of everything? Because that's the desire of his heart. So I just ask you to just take the words that have been said and let them lead you and guide you to one thing, and that's a life with Jesus Christ. Thank you. Until next time. <laughs>